Good morning campers, it is now half six and day number nine on the Cape Raft Trail. We had a nature's alarm call, we had the cuckoo and then we also had a snipe and I'll just sort of play what a snipe sounds like if you've never heard one before. So I had that at 4 o'clock in the morning, plus the cuckoo, so that woke me up. Anyway, the tent has no condensation, so that's good. Right, yo, it's just gone nine o'clock and we are packed and ready to go. As usual, leave no trace. Let's roll. That's the clock started on the watch. Right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> go <different ways. laughs> right, yo, more track bashing for us. We are uh, on our way to Loch and Fada, which is meant to be a superb location. So we're looking forward to getting up there. Yep. Yeah, I've often seen that. It's, that's usually when I've been away for a long weekend, you see that. Alright folks, we've been going an hour and 40 now. Just over seven kilometres and we've got our first really good view of the Fisherfield Munros. So the one at the back here, that is a Vagin. This one here is Ben Tarson. And this one here is Mullock Corey McFerker, something like that. And just poking up here is Sleoch. So uh, we've got a few more kilometres to go before we reach Loch Fadder. Drink it in folks, this is stunning. Super boss! So we're at Loch and Fada at the moment. The plan is we're going to ignore the path that goes down and we're going to take a bearing. It's a small locking up there and head up that way. Uh, and then we're going to get our, our Bialik which is filling up again. So I will keep you informed of how we get on with that. We're in the middle of a dry spell, so the train underfoot should be okay. If I put my rucksack on, you will sting me. Hitch a lift. That's it. On you go. Good boy or girl. On the bees. Yay, I'm on the bees. There you go. That's better for you. There you go. Phew. <laughs> right, old well, folks, we've reached the little lock in here. We're a little bit below the standard book route, which is above us over there. I can see the Bialak that we want to take us through to the next section of the hike and the contour lines look alright in the map so we're going to stick to this height, work our way around to the Bialak I'll bring you back there Alright folks, brought you back early because we have found an absolute cracker of a hidden gem here the Bialak is just over my shoulder but we found this amazing water slide it's cascading down the slabs as a natural pool right there lovely
so deep just in here. If I had a towel with me, I'd be in, right? This is stunning. Alrighty folks, that's us at Bialak na Croix. And from here it is downhill now. Now, coming across, cutting that angle from the standard route wasn't actually that bad at all. I wouldn't try it in bad weather because that, obviously that water slide would be impassable in spate. But in good conditions, I would, uh, I would suggest it. Wasn't too many peat hags to negotiate. But again, I can't really compare because I haven't been up the higher up route up there. So six and a half a dozen maybe. Right folks, usually the route will swing up towards Shenabal Boffy um, in Loch Anid, which is a popular camping spot. We, however, is where we branch off and do a slightly more bespoke route and we head along to this Loch of Royne Boffy. And then from there we're going to decide if we're going to spend the night there or push on to Ian's house. Now Ian's House Forestway Bunkhouse is 12 kilometres from the Boffey. It sounds doable, it is doable obviously. Uh, we've done 14 kilometres so far and we've probably got another four to the Boffey over this rough uh, pathless terrain before we pick up the path. So it's quite early in the day, it's only about two o'clock or something. So uh, the temptation is there to push on and then that would buy us an extra day. Um, the only thing is there's some rain coming in. Ian wouldn't mind avoiding that, but to avoid that would mean two rest nights at Ian's, and I think two rest nights is a bit OTT. Uh, I think you'd get a wee bit lazy and it'd be hard to get going again. So I definitely only want one zero day. Two would be way too much. This here is Skurban and the Torres Munro known for its uh, boulder fields and you'll see here on the left and the right side of it you've got the Skurban slab so just zoom in and you can get some really nice roots up those slabs quite a phenomenal feature that really grippy quartz in the dry alrighty we are on the path happy days so you can see that's the Bialak we've come from. We picked up a path that comes down here and then we had a bit of a cross country section over the Heller and Bog. It wasn't too bad up here to the path. So it took us five hours to get here from uh, Kinloch Q and I've got 15 and a half kilometres on the clock. So we should only have about another two and a half kilometres to the Buffy. Whew, let's go. Let's go, Joe. No way that's a boffy. That is somebody's hoose. Surely not. That'll be the boffy in the back. <laughs> Let's have a look. Sounds like someone's having a, a shit in there, Ian. No, eh? Hold it. No. You're not. Just on the side. Oh! I think, mate, you did the keep after him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's empty. Fuck. That's good. Not too bad. Three sleeping platforms here. A couple here. Nice little stove. Play place to hang up your gear. <laughs> that was my show thinking. The White House is all locked up. That's for like Duke of Edinburgh and stuff like that. Anyway, both of us are feeling strong, so uh, we're going to push on and uh, it's a four kilometre walk out to the road and then a six kilometre walk to Ian's so uh, it's only just after three o'clock so it does seem too early to pack in so we shall continue on
Yes, come on, let's do this. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I don't know if I've made a mistake here. We got to the end of the lock, which was about four and a bit kilometers for the boffy, and uh, Ian had phoned his dad for the lift. So I was like, no, I want to do this and it's full entirety. But he's like, yeah, but we can go back and do it tomorrow. But like, well, tomorrow's a rest day, so I don't want to be faffing about doing this last section. So uh, they're away. Ian's going to do this tomorrow. And I've now got a two kilometre road walk to find the track that takes me down to Forest, uh, Forest Way. Oh, it was so tempting just seeing the car. Right, I've done two kilometres down the road. I do apologise for shooting into the sun, but Ian says I have to walk past the, uh, the little hydro station there and then before the bridge pick up this hydro track here so I hope this is the right one we'll go for it, I'll report back In other news I um, worked out last night back at uh, Kinloch Q we have done we had done 112 miles yesterday so at some point today we would have uh, smashed the halfway barrier because uh, let's think I think the, the Cape Rachel is between 220 to 230 miles depending on what sort of routes you do because there's so many variations so yeah maybe at Lock and Fadder was the halfway mark I don't know but uh, it's a nice milestone but it's quite daunting as well to think that I've been going nine days and I'm only halfway through it. So uh, the good thing is, at Strathcarran, you then switch over to the Harvey's north map of the Cape Raft Trail. So that was another little significant milestone as well. And this bloody track keeps climbing by the way. Oh, a signpost, Kuleg Path. Look to the map, can't see anywhere called Kuleg. Seems to be roughly going in the direction I want it, so let's do it. Oh, I kid you not folks, I am glad this path is finally losing height because it was hogging just under the 200 metre contour lines like come on, come on, when's this going to drop? And I'm happily dropping. Oh dear me. That's uh, just over 31 plumbers on the clock. Many is that you've done Ian today? Many Ian? 24! 24! I can't hear! Aye, 24 Ian, that's right. Aye. I've still got another 2 3 to go at this rate. It looks like I've got a nice tarmac farm track to follow. Across a bridge, onto the main road, into the little woodland section at Lal Forest, and that's 15 20 minutes and I will be there Hurrah! We're here! Thank God for that! Alrighty folks, that is us off! We're on the go again and uh, what we've got is just a little bit of road walking to the, the start of the next section and I'll bring you back at Inverlau where the wee red phone box is Alrighty, so there's a little red telephone box and we are heading up this track here Well after a wee rest day it is good to be back on the trail although I must admit this morning I felt a bit meh at the thought of another seven, eight days ahead. But uh, I know once I get a few kilometers in the legs, we'll be fine. Ian's got us a little shortcut here. Instead of going that way, we're going to take a mountain bike track. It takes us this way and it gets us up onto the higher path quicker.
straight over at the junction. Oh, I'm out of breath. Whew. Well, for the first time in 10 days, we've got the waterproofs out. And then typically the rain calms down a bit, but just looking ahead at the cloud above, we're going to get soaked at some point, so we may as well get them on now. Probably sweat, like a sweaty thing. Alrighty folks, we're almost at the top of this track and we've got a couple of options here. Most of the guidebooks will take you around this big featureless lump here and you'll skirt around that. But we're actually going to go up and over the summit because it's only an extra 50 metres and it kind of means you avoid some of these peat hags. And also, when you get over the other side of that, you can make a more sort of direct line straight down into Glen Ducre. So that is the plan. It is literally only an extra 50 metres up to the summit. And this is also a Graham. Alright folks, that's us at the top of the Graham now. Visibility is rubbish. So we're going to push off down towards Glen Ducre. So hopefully you can just make out the lock that we want to be going down. We've got Glen Ducre here and then the Boffey knocking dam is just flooding along that lock. So hopefully the camera's picking that out. So we're just going to make a gentle descent. You want to cross that river as soon as possible and avoid that gorge and then stick to the right hand side. So let's go. Lunch stop. It's quarter to one and I'm starving. But it's some shielings, we're just having a wee breather here out of the, out of the wind. Glen Dugray Scott is just over that way. Not far to go now. Right, so we found a path and you can see why the guidebooks suggest staying on the right side of the river because a gorge is just starting to form just over there but the terrain is getting rougher as well That's pretty cool Right, we went through the gate and there's a path on the other side of the fence and it seems to tie in with the map so I think this is the right way What do you mean? Really? I think what I'll do is if we go up here That should do it hopefully Right we are back on the other side of the fence that we started on and I can see from here with Ian jumping the fence he's making progress up the hill so uh, I'll bring you back if this is the right way well I'll bring you back anyway <laughs> Right folks just a quick report back we're now on the right tracks so you definitely want to stay on this side of the fence don't go through that gate don't be a fandango to be fair to us, on a 150k map, that lie of the land is really tight and it's a wee bit hard to read, but uh, we got our bearings and we're back on track. Happy days folks, we're now on the Land Rover track and the cross country bog trotting is finished for today because this track pretty much goes all the way to uh, Oiko Bridge. So the plan is, we're going to continue along this track, we're going to stop in at Knock Damp Boppy, just for a quick look and a breather, and then we're going to head to the School of Rock Boppy. Yeah! I spy with my little eye. Something beginning with B. You guessed it. 
Buffy. Right, here we are. We are at the Buffy. Now the footage will probably be a little bit grainy when I get inside. Just with probably being a bit dark and dingy. Oh, let's go upstairs. Cool. Take baths. Well, I've got like a... This is the luxury room up here, right? That's like the couples up here. Lounge. Oh, it's so a wee swatch upstairs. Oh, that's a honeymoon suite. Oh, my missus would love this. Here, Nicola, if you're watching, this can be your treat for letting me do the Cape Raft Trail. Even better than the Roy Bridge Hotel. Alrighty, lunch stop, and we're back on the go. Alright folks, I thought I'd quickly bring you back. Haven't been doing any filming at all because there's not a lot to film at the moment. We've been on a track since God knows back when and uh, we're just making our way to this schoolhouse boffy now. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a boffy? Is it a boffy? Here we are. The schoolhouse. Robin, eyes to the whiteboard. Sorry Mr Wallace.